Well, good morning, everyone. It's great to have you joining us this morning. I'm back in my office this morning. Uh, so uh, I just thought I'd sit down here because I've got a rather, uh, it's a tough topic to talk about today. Uh, but first uh, of all, I just want to say thank you for your commitment to listening to these daily uh, Facebook Live again on Powerful Prayer Strategies. Uh, it's so fantastic to see all the comments and things uh, coming through on them. Firstly, I want to share some great news this morning that iTunes have now accepted the audio of these to be made available as a podcast. So these are going to be rolled out in the next couple of days, which is great. So it means that you can listen to them uh, where, wherever you are around the world on a podcast app, which is great news. And I'm hoping that the Android version of that will be accepted in the coming days as well. Well, this morning I want to talk about the fact that the Bible actually says that there is something that can hinder our prayers and make them ineffective. Uh, sometimes I think that Bible verses like these shouldn't be in the Bible, but they are. <laughs> and it's a, they're in there for a good reason, because God has instructed us to live lives that are to be God-honoring, that benefit us and benefit all humankind. Uh, so this is a verse that God really uh, hit me on a couple of years ago, so I want to share it with you this morning. And the verse I'm referring to is found in 1 Peter 3 verse 17. And uh, today I'm going to read from the Amplified Version. It says, In the same way you husbands live with your wives in an understanding way, with great gentleness and tact, and with an intelligent regard for a marriage relationship, as with someone physically weaker since she is a woman. Show her honor and respect as a fellow heir of the grace of life, so that your prayers may not be hindered or ineffective. So, all of 1 Peter 3 is actually a great passage, and I want to encourage you to get out the whole passage uh, and read through it and meditate on it, because there's so much there in the whole chapter. And I've chosen this passage this morning to particularly speak to husbands, as the way you treat your wife has, actually has a direct effect on your own prayer life. So you need to honor her. We are to live with our live wives in an understanding way. We are to respect her, because she is an heir just like you uh, in the grace of life. So if you don't, the consequences of that is that your you will be your prayers will be hindered or made ineffective. So how do we honor someone? So we honor someone with their words. So what words are you speaking of your wife? How do you talk to others about your wife? Are you always putting her down or building her up? What are you doing to support her, encourage her, provide for her, pray for her, Release her into the destiny that God has for you. Do you see your wife as a Proverbs 31 woman? Now, I know I've spoken often about Proverbs 31, but many people don't actually understand that. And uh, I know my wife certainly is one, and I honor her today for that. And, and maybe for the women listening, you need to get out Proverbs 31 and meditate on it, because that's um, I sense that that's, that's what God has for you as well. You know, last week we started reading through the through Arthur Burke's book, Blessing Your Spirit Book. So something that I want to encourage you to do is for husbands to bless your wife's spirit. And wives, you can do this to your husband as well. So in our online community, I've actually put a whole worksheet about different spirit blessings that you can do for your uh, for spouses or married couples to do. So Here's some morning and night blessings uh, for you to do. So one, bless your own spirit or your spouse's spirit by saying, <clears throat> I bless your spirit to lead your soul and your body. So you bless your spirit to lead your soul and your body. Before you go to sleep each night, take turns saying this to each other or saying it to yourself. I call your spirit to come forth to be prominent of your soul and body so that you may receive all the rest and revelation the Holy Spirit brings to you through the night. He gives to his beloved even as they sleep. And in the morning you can wake up, take turns saying to this other or yourself, I call your spirit to attention to operate in a leadership role of your soul and body. And I call your spirit into alignment with the purpose of Jesus for your life today. As we start to put, uh, speak blessing over our spouse, you know, it's amazing how much our attitude changes to our spouse. Just a little bit of a sideline here. There's also a blessing exercise in the online community that will uh, spice up your sex life no end. But I'm not going to go any further into that on this today because this is for G-rated today. So 
so there, bless your wife. You know, th this actually changed your... So, and, uh, you know, I want to speak to those who perhaps are going through a divorce situation or are in a divorce situation. You know, you still need to honor. God is called... We... Your ex-spouse is still made in the image of God. Now, they may be doing something that just ticks you off, something chronic, but watch your words. Watch your words. Watch your negativity over them. Bless them. Speak blessing into them. Uh, bless, bless, you know, call their spirit to attention to operate in a leadership role over their soul and body and, and call their spirit into alignment for the purpose of Jesus has for them for today you know you don't need to do this face to face you can just speak it out in the spirit and as you start to bless them you know one is going to change your attitude towards them but two is going to bring them into a place where they can receive what the father has for them so i know this is turning into a bit of a longer one this morning but there's one other area that i wanted to speak about this morning because i think it has something to do with this whole area so the other area that I want to speak about today is to you need to get to know your wife and how she is wired, particularly in the area of communication. And wives, you need to get to know your husband in the way he communicates to you as well. So often, how often do you hear a husband say, she doesn't listen to me, or maybe it's the other way, away, or way around, he's not listening to me. Well, maybe that's because you're not speaking their language. And, and it's not about them learning about you it's about you learning about them so one reason for this is that you uh, we need to understand how God is wired us so differently in the area of communication in fact all of us are very differently we're not you can't just put a person in a box to say this is the way they operate because God is wired each one so uniquely in this area so you know, from a personal story, I was struggling with this with Pam. And she was frustrating me no end in the area of communication. But it wasn't until I did uh, did a life language communication profile that I discovered why she was doing it and what she was doing in it. And then it became that I needed to adjust uh, and not her. And once I got to that place of adjustment with the way and understanding how Pam communicated, it brought such understanding to me and I could... Um, it brought peace to my life. And it, I worked out then what is the best way to communicate with my wife. So the profiles do cost money. They cost US $45 to do. But let me tell you, it's been one of the best investments that I've ever made in our marriage. Uh, as it's brought such understanding to me, has reduced so much uh, stress and anxiety in my own life and no doubt in Pam's as well. So uh, I'm going to put the link to doing the profiles down the bottom so that you can uh, get to know those. And it, you can even do those for your children. They're also great to do in a workplace situation. Is someone frustrating you in your workplace because you don't understand the way they talk or you're not sure how to talk, then that's a, a thing for them to do. So to finish up, so today, husbands, you need to honor your wives, bless them, speak well of them, support them and encourage them, build them up. Thank God for them. You know that research shows that we thank others more than we thank our own family members. So it's time to change that. So bless you today as you seek to do all that God has called you to do. And I pray that your prayers are not hindered or made ineffective today because you treat uh, your spouse appropriately. Bless you abundantly as you go throughout today.